Hey, Red Bay students. Um, uh, I would have loved to have got to do this, to see you guys' faces and, and just kind of reconnect and, and catch up with you guys. But uh, just want you to know that uh, I've been missing you all. Um, you know, you're all really special to me. And uh, I was kind of talking to Mandy, and uh, she kind of said that, you know, right now with uh, y'all not really having a youth pastor right now, that um, you guys weren't um, really getting... Uh, a lot of interaction and stuff on Wednesday nights and things like that. And so uh, I kind of volunteered to just kind of send out a video each week until, you know, y'all are able to start meeting again in person and things can kind of go back to normal and, um, you know, kind of help Brad and Bill out a little bit. I know, uh, you know, during this time trying to run business stuff, they've got a lot on their plate. Uh, it's been pretty awesome to, you know, see Brad uh, talking to the president and all kind of stuff like that. And so it's a, uh, I know you guys are, uh, kind of excited about that and proud of him and, and I'm proud to know him as well uh, just with kind of some of the stuff that he's got going on and so um, it's an honor to you know be able to you know teach you guys a little bit more and and, and hopefully you'll you'll uh, watch the video and and uh, just kind of you know shoot me a text let me know how everything's going um, you know kind of how you guys are are handling all this and and maybe some things that you're doing to to try to get through it and so um, you know, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and get started. Um, I'm going to kind of talk about, you know, you can't handle this. And that's kind of, you know, probably something we're all thinking about during this time. Um, because, you know, there, there's so much that this is, that this has changed and that this is ruined as far as plans and, and things like that. But, you know, we, we've all heard that saying, you know, God will only give you what you can handle. And, you know, that's not always true. You know, sometimes we experience moments, we experience things that we can't handle. Um, and in those times, you know, we, we have to be reminded, um, you know, and we are reminded that we must continually rely on God. And so the coronavirus pandemic um, that's going on right now um, is one of those moments, you know, and, and there's plenty of people that think it's not a big deal or um, you know, it's conspiracy theory or whatever the case may be, you know, but there's also plenty of people that still right now, uh, buying up all the toilet paper every time it hits the shelf and, and, you know, buying all the Germex. I, I, I don't even think Germex is even a thing anymore. I don't think it exists because I can't find it in any store at all. Um, and so, um, you know, I'm, I know many of us would like for it to go away, uh, especially you seniors this year. Um, you know, it kind of put a, put a kink in the plans, you know, this probably, uh, none of us were expecting, you know, something like this to happen, especially during such a, um, you know, a special time for you guys. And so, um, we want it to go away. I mean, it's interrupting our lives in many ways. Um, you know, for me, um, me and Jeannie, we plan to, to go on our anniversary trip to, to Boston and, uh, Rhode Island. Um, as most of you probably know or remember, I, I love the Celtics. I love basketball, and and we were going to uh, actually go and and watch a Celtics game in Boston, and so that was like a dream come true, you know. And but we had to cancel it. We had to, you know, we had to change our plans for the trip. Everything was shutting down. The NBA, you know, suspended its season. Um, you know, we, March Madness got canceled. MLB got post postponed. You know, college baseball and softball and all that's been shut down, and you know the. This is pretty crazy, but they're even talking about possibly not playing football. And I don't know if any of us can, you know, can live through that. And so, um, you know, for some of us, though, that's that's just minor interruptions, uh, minor adjustments to the way that we live. Uh, but, you know, for others, it, it interrupted your last. You know, it interrupted your last year of high school, uh, your last season of sports, your last prom. Um, you know, I'm sure there are many other things, you know, that, that this is, you know, uh, interrupted and, and makes this such a challenging time. And so uh, tonight I want us to understand that, you know, there's going to be pains in our life, things that happen that we just can't handle. Uh, the problem of pain, I want us to understand, comes from mankind's fall into sin. Um, you know, but God's heart has always been to redeem and rescue, and even more than that, to be in relationship with his creation. And so uh, our text tonight is going to start uh, from Genesis chapter 3, and we'll be looking at verses 1 through 19. 
And um, I know for, for all the ones that would always ask me, uh, you know, what verse did you say? Where did you say I turn to? Um, it's going to be Genesis chapter 3, uh, verses 1 through 19. And so if you want to pause the video and um, actually look that up on your phone, on the app on your phone, or if you want to get your Bible and turn to that real quick and, and, and read through it so you can kind of get an understanding of what's going on, um, you can pause the video and do that. Or if you got your Bible and you want to turn there real quick, surely by the time I got done saying all that, you've gotten there and you can read along with me. And so starting in chapter 3, verses 1, we're going to go through verse 19. It says, Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden, but about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, You must not eat it or touch it or you will die. No, you will not die, the serpent said to the woman. In fact, God knows that when you eat... Uh, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God. And so knowing good and evil, the woman saw that the tree was good for food and delightful to look at, and that it was desirable for obtaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. So the Lord God called out to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Then he said, Who told you that you were naked? Did you eat from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man replied, The woman you gave to be with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate. So the Lord God asked the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than any livestock and more than any wild animal. You will move on your belly and eat dust all the days of your life. I will put hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. He said to the woman, I will intensify your labor pains. You will bear children with painful effort. Your desire will be for your husband, yet he will rule over you. And he said to the man, Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, do not eat from it. The ground is cursed because of you. You will eat from it by means of painful labor all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. You will eat bread by the sweat of your brow until you return to the ground, since you were taken from it, for you are dust, and you will return to dust. And so here we find Adam and Eve and the serpent. You know, God has commanded Adam and Eve to not eat the fruit or they'll die. You know, verse 1 points out that the serpent uh, was more crafty than any other beast of the field that God had created. And so the serpent then twists God's word. He told Eve, you know, surely you won't actually die. You know, God wouldn't really kill you for eating the fruit. And in the end, the result was sin and death. Um, this same thing, um, you know, this same encounter is happening daily in the lives of people uh the devil's at work uh in the lives of believers and non-believers alike you know um insert the sin uh whatever sin it is that you can think of you know twist it around hey surely it isn't that bad you know surely it won't kill you um you know and sometimes there is an actual death that comes as a result of sin immediately you know but there's a very real spiritual death that happens because of sin you know, Adam and Eve didn't die physically, but they did spiritually. You know, in Israelite worship, true life or or living, true living was found at the temple where God dwelled. And so to be expelled from the city, uh, which would also include, you know, that you were unable to go to the temple where God dwelled, um, you know, which is also, we, we find that similar thing. Uh, as the case with lepers, you know, lepers were, you know, cast out completely, you know, from the from the city. Um, this was the same as being dead. You know, when they cast out the lepers, they didn't go visit them. They didn't go say, hey, how's it going? They didn't go check on them. They were as good as dead. And so when people were kicked out of the city, even if they didn't have leprosy, but they were unable to go to the temple, it was just the same as being dead. And so when Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden, you know, their relationship with God was broken. Um, they could no longer have daily interactions with God as they did before. You know, instead, they now had to toil for food, uh, suffer in this now broken world due to sin, and eventually die. 
you know, and because we live in a fallen world due to sin, we're going to face pain and suffering. Uh, there will, of course, be, you know, pain and suffering that also comes from persecution uh, from being a Christian. And it says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 11, you are blessed when they insult you and persecute you and falsely say every kind of evil against you because of me. And But there's also going to be pain and suffering simply because we live in a fallen world uh, that we just can't handle. You know, whether it's the death of a loved one, you know, a serious car accident, um, you know, this coronavirus pandemic, whatever it may be, um, you know, these types of things are going to happen because because of sin, because sin is coming in and it has broken uh, the perfect creation that God had. And so, um, you know, that's I've told you guys uh, uh, numerous times about, um, you know, my car wreck. Um, I was I was driving home. You know, I wasn't out drinking, partying, things like that. I, I fell asleep. I fell asleep. Uh, wrecked my car, you know, hit my face on the tree. Um, all that good stuff that, you know, we've all talked about before. And, and, you know, I was mad at God for a while, but, you know, you have to understand that things like that are going to happen because we live in a broken world. And so when we face pain and suffering due to the result of our poor choices or the pain brought on by living in a fallen world, you know, we need to remember where our hope comes from. And so, um, in these moments, we must lean on God and his promises to us and his providence for us. And so in Isaiah chapter 43, verse two, it says, I will be with you when you pass through the waters. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. You will not be scorched when you walk through the fire and the flame will not burn you. Is our hope and joy found in Christ and Christ alone? You know, or is it found in the things of this world? You know, it's times like these that really show us where our, where our hope and joy is found. You know, are we more upset about the things of this world that have been interrupted and taken away, such as sports, um, maybe even our senior year, um, you know, the different things like that? I'm not saying those are bad things. I'm, those are definitely things that, that we care about and things that I care about myself, you know. But are we more upset about those things being interrupted than we are about not being able to meet together in God's house to worship together? You know, a lot of things that distract us from God you know, have been canceled. They've been postponed. You know, we're not able to turn on the TV and watch every sport that comes on. You know, we're not, you know, distracted by a lot of the things in the world because, I mean, those things have been canceled. Those things have been taken away. And so we need to take that time to understand that, you know, that we can't handle or change the current state situation that we're in. And we need to lean into Christ, you know, where we can have confidence that though sin has brought death and destruction and pain into this world, you know, ultimately humanity, ultimately us, will, you know, we'll be victorious over these things because we have a Savior who has taken on sin and death himself and defeated it. And so in John 16, 33, it says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You will have suffering in this world. Be courageous. I've conquered the world. And so guys, you know, right now I want you to just, um, you know, I want you to take some time to uh, write a list of things that are bringing you hurt and pain right now. You know, um, start from the smallest and go to the biggest. If it's, you know, maybe you've come to grips already with, um, you know, with your senior year being taken away or this school year being taken away or not getting to finish out softball or baseball or, you know, maybe you've come to grips with all those things. But but whatever it is in your life right now that that is that is bringing you hurt, that's bringing you pain, anxiety, you know, whatever the case may be, um, from the smallest to the biggest, I want you to write those things down. And then, guys, I want you to take these things to the Lord in prayer and ask Him to give you peace in those situations and to help you draw nearer to Him. And if there's any particular thing that, that you have that you want me to be praying for uh, you with as well, you know, send me a text message. Give me a phone call. Um, whatever whatever it is that, that's more convenient for you to contact me and and I'll be more than happy to be praying about those things. And and so I just want you to know that, uh, you know, uh, we miss you. Um, I'm going to be sending you uh, or I'm going to be sending these videos to Mandy and she's going to get them out to you. And I want to keep trying to do this for you guys until uh, you're able to, to meet back together. So, um, you know, reach out. Let me know how you're doing. Uh, let me know if there's anything I can do for you or any way I can be praying for you. 
And so uh, I'm going to dismiss us in prayer, and I look forward to uh, sending you guys a video next week. Let's pray. God, we just love you and thank you uh, for everything that you've done for us, God. I just thank you so much for the work that you've done uh, through your son, Jesus Christ, and uh, allowing us an uh, opportunity to, uh, through faith, have a relationship with you again, God. And and God, I just pray for each and every one that's, that's watching this video. God, I pray for peace in their life. God, I pray that that uh, during this time that they are finding ways to, uh, you know, cope with what's going on, God. But ultimately, I pray that they're finding ways to grow in their relationship with you. And God, I just ask that um, that your will be done in all this, Lord. Um, and that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take this time to, to truly evaluate our relationship with you, God, and do whatever it takes uh, to make this relationship with you um, so much better and so much stronger on our end, God. And we just love you and praise you and thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. See you guys.